trying to. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hi, y'all. And today's Friday. That means it's on the spot Friday and our special guest today. And you guys are in for an awesome treat. Hey, Elena Ledoux. Hey, Elena. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yes. Um, Elena is has many different diverse talents and interests and uh, runs a really large and successful house cleaning company in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I guess your, your, your husband has a firm that does uh, security screens. Screens, yes. Um, I mean, you won a national award, was it last year? With, uh, uh, was it was Small Business Administration? Yes, SBA, um, Small Business of the Year for State of Nevada. And then I also won Entrepreneur of the Year for National Association of Women Business Owners for State of Nevada. That so, is that is wacky incredible. Congratulations on that. We're uh, so we're excited. Awesome. We're excited to have you here today. Um, I know for, you have a lot going on all the time too, Elena. So really, <laughs> we really do appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm honored. I, I love you guys' show. So, well, you know, I'm wondering if anybody got my clue on Tuesday last week when I said that I would always bet on this person. Did y'all get that she was in Vegas? Anybody? No. <laughs> well, I can't even see comments, so I have no idea if anybody's even here yet. You didn't say person. You said I would I would bet on her, which basically No, I didn't, because I didn't say her until later on in the week. Okay. <laughs> I said on Wednesday I said her. Okay. We try to give hints throughout the week as to who our guest is, is going to be. Nobody guessed me, right? No. <laughs> That's good. No. Well, Sarah Mitchell. Somebody here. guessed um, the initials MM uh, um, yesterday. But I don't know who they were. The only person I could think of was Maria, that maybe they were thinking of Maria Montserrat. Yeah, that could be. Um, Sarah Mitchell said that uh, she goes, Oh my God, I knew it would be Elena. Okay. Oh, sure you did. Now you say that, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's funny. So, Elena, fill us in on what's been going on for you during COVID. Did you close? Did you stay open? We stayed open. Um, we, uh, I basically started with being propaganda, my own propaganda machine, and I realized as soon as Corona broke out that. If everybody's going to hear, you're all going to die, you're all going to die, you're all going to die from every out outlet, from every Facebook account, then it's just going to kill our business. So I went on, uh, me and, you know, part of the our group that we belong to, you know, some of us went on TV, newspaper, magazine saying like, not everybody's going to die and we got you, we're killing viruses, we're in your corner, we're essential business. So we did this kind of PR cycle. So that helped a lot to stave off some of the losses initially. Um, and then we started doing um, grocery deliveries and fogging, you know, disinfection, stuff like that. So that went pretty well. We're still offering that. I'm not gonna, that's not gonna replace our main business anytime soon, but it had a lot of, I think like there's such a positive sentiment because so many people wanted to see somebody small trying hard and succeeding right they wanted to see positive news they wanted to see somebody pivoting in the storm instead of just seeing the devastation and you know everybody's closing their doors and shutting down so yeah. uh, we got celebrated as like the little you know train that could <laughs> the little something they could right the little maid that could um so we felt very much embraced by our community and so that was great and it's both like our industry as a whole and our local community in vegas so that was amazing. Even my neighbors are saying, we got you. We see you. We see what you're doing. You know, hang in there. Oh, you do a little bit. So you know, nice. I love that. Good. Yeah. So and then afterwards, uh, our business survived. Obviously, we took a hit in revenue, but we're uh, very profitable still. And then uh, revenue is almost back to normal. And which allows me to be in uh, the, on the farm right now in Washington. So in Cedra Woolley. Oh, and I didn't know you were here. Where are you at? I'm in Cedra Woolley, uh, Washington. I'm going to show you. 
don't know if you can see it, but there's like a cat, <laughs> cat sleeping. <laughs> I feel like Washington that is known for our cats. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of feel like that cat right now. Um, so trying to unplug with my family. We're sailing for 10 days, and then for 10 more days, we're living on um, Ocean Cottage, Oceanfront Cottage, and then now we're here in the farm with cows and cats. Wow. Liz, so is nice. that one of your cats? No, it's just a random. That's not one of my cats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my cats do travel, but not quite that far, Tom. Okay. Yeah, so life is good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sure. I feel like I've been through a washing machine cycle, uh, so it feels good to unplug a little bit and kind of decompress. Boy, I, I, I could relate to that. It does really feel like you know being thrown this way and that over the past yeah. couple of months, right? <laughs> like yes. every time you turn around, something new. Yes. I, I do feel like um, being little businesses was really helpful too for the businesses that stayed open i think that our customers you know kept paying us and donating money <laughs> like I, I i had no idea that the of got money dude and support it was crazy Hey, yeah. I've been in business a long time and I, I have never seen anything like it before. Yeah, you, you're breaking up a little bit, but uh, I could understand that, you know, it was it felt nice to have your clients embrace you and just pay you for not even cleaning and all this other stuff. So, yeah, it feels yeah. good for sure. So today is on the spot Friday. So for anybody who's here that doesn't know what that is, that's a rapid fire Q&A session where you guys can ask us a question and each one of us gets one minute to answer that question. We have a clock here that basically counts down once we start answering the question. And uh, if we can answer it in less than a minute. That's great. But if uh, it gets to uh, zero and we haven't answered it, we have to stop right there. And that means you, Liz, okay? <laughs> you know, Elena, that means you and I have to stop, but Tom's just going to keep on talking. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to like stop him with my hands and it's not going to work. <gasps> uh, we should probably get started though, Tom. I'm looking at the time. It's yeah. already, we, I think we actually started on time for a change. <laughs> yeah, we did. It's like, I don't know how that happened. I think it's probably messing with people. And, mm -hmm. and you guys, I um, because I'm on my phone today, I can't see your comments and I can't comment. Normally, when you guys say hi, I I say hi back and I like it. I'm not ignoring y'all. So, Bridget, if you're there, Leslie, you know, all the normals, Denise, if you guys are there, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't. I can't see your comments today. Sarah, I think I heard Tom say, I'm guessing that Sarah Mitchell. Yep, yep, yep. She's here. Yes. All right, Sarah, start us off, Sarah. What kind of question do you have for us today for On the Spot? She I does. actually have a bunch of questions that people gave me too, Tom. She does have a question for us. It's right here. It just popped up. All right. I she's, asking, she's asking, have you ever had your quality start to go downhill? And how did you fix that? Um, okay. Who's going who, first? Hmm. I'll be glad to. I can go. You want to go? Okay. So we're going to sure. go. We're going to go in a circle. It's going to be Liz, Tom, Elena in that way. Because you got to watch Liz. She'll get us like tangled up and she'll want to go laugh every day. You, you'll see. It'll be a mess. Okay. Bang. Let's go. He's like my mean older brother. <laughs> it's okay. You're yeah. on the clock. You're, you've already wasted five seconds. Oh, have you even turned the clock on? Okay, okay. So, oh. yes, Sarah, oh, really? I have oh, had that I'm happen. Sorry. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I failed. There you okay, go. Here we go. Okay, yes, Sarah, I have had that problem. I wish I could say that I'd only had that happen once, but I've had it happen so many times over the past 27 years that I couldn't tell you how many times. All right, so here are some of the things that I have done during those time frames. 
Um, when quality goes down, I typically try to rally the troops. That's my main thing that I do is, hey, you guys, check out our scores. What's going on? What are we going to do? First, I hit the leadership team, get them all rallied up and excited and enthusiastic to fix whatever the problem is. And then we together rally the them a lot more and get them excited to figure out what's going on and how we can all step up and what we can individually do. Um, I think that's the key is we sort of tag into each individual person. What can they do? What's their contribution going to be? And collectively, it's a, a big one thing. Bang. Yes, Sarah, I, I, if anybody that's been in this business for any amount of time had that happen, I'm, I'm sure it's happened to us uh, numerous times. Um, Typically, it's just a matter of, of putting more emphasis on it, paying more attention to it. Typically, if you're having quality problems, you're either getting bad you know, scorecards back, customer surveys, if you will, or customers are calling and leaving complaints or worse yet, canceling service. So you want to look in your organization and find trends. Who's having the service problems, the quality problems? And you want to pull those people aside and coach them. At the same time, you want to be telling your entire organization that you're struggling with quality and you recognize people who get compliments like in your morning meetings. We have meetings every morning. So we celebrate the compliments. We celebrate the, the, the good uh, scorecard scores. And we take the people that are struggling and pull them aside and talk to them. That typically fixes it after a week or two. Hey, Tom, before, um, before Atlanta goes, let me roll up my window because it's getting busy here. Okay. You good? Yeah. It was okay. just getting loud. Okay. No. Here you go, Elena. You're on. I've never had that be happen before. No, just kidding. Uh, it happened. <laughs> uh, so what we realized is that um, when the quality goes down, that hurts my company, hurts our company. And the only time people understand that pain is when they feel mm -hmm. the pain. So it, it hurts me, it hurts them, then they understand it pretty quickly. So we tie the compensation and performance reviews based on quality pretty strongly. So as soon as uh, quality of an individual technician goes down, there's a performance review, their pay goes down, or they go and they become suspended for a week or two weeks. And that fixes it right away because no amount of pleading, dancing, here's the bunny helped at all. The only time it worked is when we succeed and they succeed. And when we fail, they fail. That's the only time, you know, it happens. The magic happens. So. That's that's our secret, basically, to that problem. Perfect. Oh, she's going to be one of those fast ones, Tom. She's not even going to need all her time. Well, we'll see. Elena, Tom's <laughs> going to love that because he's always going to take your extra seconds. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You can you can have him. Elena, you know me well enough to know that you can't believe. You know Liz well enough to know. That, that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I want to okay. them, so you can go ahead and take more time. Okay. Sarah has another question here. This is a good one. Oh. She's asking, not to say the other, the other was a good one. They're all good ones, but I particularly like this one. What do you look for in a trainer? Parentheses. I know I need to revisit foundations. Sarah was one of our foundations participants. Uh, I think uh, Sarah, you've came back as an alumni too, I believe. Is that right, Liz? I think, I feel like she's been there twice. Yeah. Yeah. And she's coming again in, in March, I'm, I'm sure. So, okay, I'll start with this one, I guess, since we're going to be going in a circle. Yep. Yeah. We look at trainers as, as people in leadership roles, leadership positions. So it's important to start to find people who embrace your company values. And you know, so it needs to be somebody that's been with your organization for some amount of time. So you get to know them, they get to know you. And... You know, some of the basic stuff, you know, like like attendance and following procedures, things like that. They don't even necessarily have to be, you know, rock star cleaners in terms of, you know, having the, the, the highest levels of productivity. But it's important that they have really good communication skills and can relate well to people. I mean, being a trainer, part of it is actually the technical part of, of how to clean. But just as importantly, is somebody that can build relationships with with uh, your new cleaning professionals and make them feel welcome and, and, and appreciate being there. So somebody who 
can handle the technical side, who's got your, your core values, but uh, is really good working with people as well. You ready, Elena? Yeah, sure. I'm only looking for one thing, which is results. So basically, I want we take a trainer, we give them two, you know, candidates, and we tell them to train them for two weeks, and then they're supposed to provide daily feedback, and then we get a feedback from the trainees as well, and then at the end of two weeks, we take those two people away and we work with them. Like the my partner actually goes out and watches them work, and then if they're ready to go and they can just work independently, that trainer passed, and it's a great trainer. If not. Because we tried everything else, the kindness, the empathy, the intelligence, the obsession of quality. All of these are great starting point, but if they don't produce the result, nothing, nothing matters. Extra Very time? <laughs> yeah, we had extra 19 seconds there. Very yeah. good. Liz, you ready? Yep. Bang, you're on. All right. So um, we... Uh, depends on what we're doing. If we're hiring somebody cold, that somebody we don't know, we're looking for two things. Somebody that's really curious and somebody that um, pays attention to what the other person needs instead of just trying to do something. If we're hiring somebody that is currently um, a client or an employee and we want to promote them, then we are looking for somebody that obviously those same things but also that has already shown that they can uh, meet the numbers that, that we need to meet. And by that, I mean our payroll percent revenue. So they need to have time, they need to have quality, and they need to have attendance. So if they can hit those three numbers consistently, um, then that's a good trainer in my mind. Perfect. Okay. Oh, we're um, all going to be fast today, it looks like. All right, Elena, my car. Elena, you're going to be going next, and here's your question. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, I, I know. Did I you say you had a question, Tom? It's, yeah, uh, I, it, it's on the uh, screen if you can see it. Yeah, it's like one 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 Z two one 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 one. Um, yeah. Oh, I can yeah. see it now. Yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, my husband always jokes. He's his favorite movie is The Blade Runner. He says, like, you are the closest to the replicant that I could find in a woman. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I can read this and respond, but I can't. I'm not that advanced. I'm the old model. So, okay, very good. So we are... Sorry, uh, Starling. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to, if you have a follow-up question, please go ahead and, and, and share that too. <laughs> Hey, Tom, I have a I have a question over here on my side. Okay. So the the oh, and you can't put it up on the screen. Sorry, but the question is, um, how do you manage the time and the amount of time that your team members spend cleaning? How do we manage? Okay. Oh, I think I'm first too, aren't I? Uh, I think this one's Elena, actually. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it's okay, good. Fine. How about that? We good? Yeah. All right. All right. Ooh, good job, Tom. You're on. So management of the time it again goes against um, go, goes with that value of when we ma are making money, when we're thriving, the team should thrive, and we're not, they're not. So we pretty much align. We give them the budget. Because we get paid, uh, we pay them hourly, but we get paid with flat rates. So every single job has a budget. And when people go over budget consistently and there's a problem, then we start like reducing their pay or putting like giving them a break from the job for a week or two weeks, taking them off the schedule. And that brings them back in line and, you know, everything is good. So it's very tightly controlled for us because that's directly tied to our profit. So, and if we don't make money, it's like 911 emergency. Like everybody, everything stops and we start looking for a problem. Excellent. You ready, Liz? Yep. All right, so our people all have a form that they fill out each day that tracks where they track for themselves. Um, it's, it's like a job form that they track in their phones, how much allotted time they had and how much time they actually spent cleaning 
And if that number is um, going in the right direction, then they are up for bonuses and rewards, etc. But if that number is not where it's supposed to be, then they're, they're not eligible for a lot of the different things that we do. So our, our strategy is to just um, watch those numbers. And if somebody's struggling in whatever way, offer help. And if they need some help, um, usually it's just a, a matter of a quick retraining around um, a flow, how to, how to flow through a realm and stop bouncing. It's almost always due to bouncing from thing to thing if their time drops. Very good. We're really big on what we call work measurement. You know, we use, we use our software made central to track all of the start and stop times and basically all of the labor content we have in each job. Each job is quoted at a, at a, at a detailed level, at a, at a room level. So we have a pretty accurate idea as to how many minutes it should take to clean a home, how many, how many labor minutes, if you will. And the team gets feedback on that and they get rated on that. We have a number of reports that we get that show us as management, uh, which jobs are, within standard and which ones are, are missing it. We have a compensation plan that, that's based on um, a revenue share. We pay commission, which creates an incentive for people to work productive and, and to, to manage their times. If uh, we have individuals that aren't making their time, we, we, we coach them and, and bring them back into alignment. Oops. Good job, Tom. I can't okay. believe you haven't gone over even once. Not you even might have once. To get an award for Liz, this. you know me, I'm a seasoned veteran at this. I, I never go over. I think Elena is just giving you a really good model to watch. A role while, yeah, she's feeling the pressure. Like 40 seconds. Dang. I know. <laughs> yeah. Ernie. Do you have another with, question, Tom? Yeah, Ernie's with us. And this is, a, this is an interesting mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. He uh, knows that uh, how valuable do you all consider, do we consider outside help or counseling? He knows that uh, we have been around a long time and do counseling, but also know we receive it as well. So I guess and I would, Elena also does consulting, Tom. She, I, um, I think she does consulting through Conquer, right? She does. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I can answer so, that. I gave a lot of thoughts. <laughs> so. um, I think I'm first this time. Okay. You're, you're, you're on. Go. Okay. So I think it's hugely, hugely important. Um, uh, everybody that I know that is successful has some type of coaching or consulting that they are, are doing and um, investing in themselves in some way. Uh, I have a weekly uh, coaching call uh, with, with my coach. And I, even though sometimes I'm like, gosh, do I really need this? Next week, I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> so absolutely. Um, so for me, uh, and my coach is not in our industry, which I really like as well. So I know that's going against hiring like any of us, uh, we three. Um, but I, I love the outside consulting because I get a bigger business view instead of just a cleaning business view. Very good. Yes, outside uh, consultants, coaching, you know, coaching in particular, I think is really important. You know, I've... Uh, been in and out of Vistage, you know, over the years, which is uh, like a CEO peer group of uh, typically they, they meet locally with, with within whatever city you're in. And people in that group are from different industries. So you're able to get different perspectives. I find that very valuable. Um, I've had individual coaches off and on over the years. I'm kind of uh, taking a sabbatical from, from some of that at the moment. And um, I guess just another, another aspect is, you know, I'm, I'm lucky and have the privilege of working closely with a lot of other, other people at coach. And a lot of times I, I, I get pointers and uh, some help just through uh, being in the right place at the right time, I guess. 
Elena? I'm relatively new to coaching, but I absolutely love it. Uh, to me, it seems like the biggest benefit of coaching is you're collapsing time. So do you absolutely need to have a coach? No, you can figure everything out on your own little skin and it's gonna take you like five to 10 years or you can collapse all of the time in months and get it all done with the correct information and guidance, right? So you know exactly what to do, you know exactly how to do it, you just do it. And then uh, there's a misperception that the coach is gonna just create magic and things will happen. The magic is gonna come out of you, not the coach, right? So you gotta do all this work. So there's a lot of suffering involved on your end this reminds me of the personal trainer that I just hired like several months ago. She kicks my butt, but I feel so much healthier, so much better than me, sort of pretending that I'm exercising for like years, right? So it's very much like that. I really love that you say pretending like you're exercising, Elena. <laughs> I know this feeling well. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hanging out at the gym, doing my thing for an hour, but yeah, not really, not re not really putting it in. Yeah, it's like running business without a coach. Okay, yeah, that's a good question, Ernie. Thanks. Thank you, Ernie. Um, you have another question, Liz? I do. Hold on. What are your top favorite books? Not exactly sure what he means by top favorite, but. I hope I'm not first. I have too many books swirling around in my head. Who's first this time? Wow. I guess uh, I guess I am. Oh, good. Uh, you know, I listen to, to to audio books a lot. I don't know what favorite ones I have. Typically, it's the most recent one I've I've been working on. Um, I got this book, White Fragility, from Robin D'Angelo uh, the other week, and have been we talked about that last Tuesday, and it uh, helps give a, a pretty interesting and useful perspective on uh, racism, and 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 um, it's it's it, it, it's a good read. Um, I like business books for for the most part. Um, you know, we've wow. Um, we did a uh, book not long ago. Actually, been working with uh, Mike McCallowitz, Fix It Next. That was a, a book that uh, Liz uh, put me on uh, the other week, and like that, he's a Virginia Tech grad. Who wouldn't uh, like that, huh? You uh, want to go, Elena? I actually have a Trello bo uh, board on all the books that I recommend, <laughs> but my favorite author is Atul Gawande. He's a surgeon and he writes a lot in a very accessible language about the medical field and also about operations, how dysfunctional, you know, healthcare system is and what, what he thoughts are on like mortality and what are we doing to healthcare system. So Be Immortal is one of my favorite books, uh, Checklist Manifesto, it's about operations. I love that. Um, Atomic Habit is another great book that I read recently. And currently I'm also reading, listening to the book, Royal Art of Poison or something like that. It's very interesting. It's historical and medical and it's just very well done. So I love that. So I read, I, I like medical stuff and I like um, also like wordsmiths and poetry, like Neruda is my favorite poet. So everything like mishmash. That really is a mishmash. It is. Poetry and medical. Yes. You ready, Liz? Yep. All right. So you guys know I read a lot, but I am like Tom. I always say that I read a lot, but for those that know me, know that I'm actually listening on Audible or actually most of the time I only buy, I think it's three Audible books a month and I tend to read two to three a week. So that means most of the time I'm reading through Libby, uh, the library. And uh, I have a ton of favorite books. Most of my favorite books are business books. I love the book Drive by Daniel Pink. I recommend that to almost everybody I meet. I also love the book um, What Got You Here Won't Get You There by Marshall Goldsmith. I've reread that many, many times. I also love the book uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. A lot of people don't like that book. I do. Um, 
I, I like the Mike Michalowicz books, Profit First, and um, the one that Tom just mentioned, Fix This Next. I also have a huge list. I'm so hot, you guys. It's hot in my car. How hot is it? I mean, it doesn't get hot in Washington. How hot is it? Oh, my God. Well, of course, it's the hottest day of the year so far. It's 84 here today. Okay. Well, I'm sitting in my hot you, little car. I might have to turn on the air for a second. Do you have an air conditioner? Yeah, so I don't die. Yeah, crack the window or something. That's kind of like leaving your dog in the car. You know what can happen. Is your nose still wet? <laughs> I had to turn off my car because I couldn't hear you. Before we take another question, Elena, what is the, I mean, medical books, that's unique. What is the, is it just the intrinsic value or do you, are you able to take what you learn from those books and translate it into your other business activities? Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm very curious what goes into the sausage, right? So for example, if I'm eating in the restaurant, I'm curious to see what's going on in the back of the restaurant. So a uh, human body is one of the most fascinating things and what's going on. It's not fully studied. We don't understand all of it, but it's, if you look closely, it's amazing what it does. Right. So, and we can't replicate it either by like our technology, like what the way it heals itself or the way, like, for example, pregnant woman, like it will produce antibodies, you know, for, to protect the baby will actually produce the antibodies to protect the, the mom, right. The pregnant woman. So it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. So I'd like to understand it. So maybe that's my next career. I'm going to be a doctor. I won't be <laughs> doing any work. I'll just, I just want to know what they know. You know, I don't think that we mentioned Tom that Elena is actually an attorney. So for those yeah. that don't know her, so yeah. she has very, very varied interests. That's why I can res respond. You know, I used to be in litigation. I can do like the rapid fire <laughs> one minute on the spot thing. So it's starting to figure that. That's why you can do it so quickly. You're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's starting to figure that you would be a medical doctor somewhere further down the line in your career. Kind of balance it out with. I have uh, another question over here, Tom. Yeah. Uh, the are you ready? I've got one here. Unless you're, you want me to. Well, let me give. Okay, you go ahead and put yours up. Okay. Before I get there, though, we've got Alonzo here. He's telling us he loves Atomic Habits, and he says that, uh, wow, Liz, we read the same books. Good oh, books. Sarah, and Sarah Mitchell says 84 is a cold day. Because she's Now when you're sitting in a closed car with the windows closed, Sarah. Do you have an air conditioner? So that it's not too loud. Do you have an air conditioner? Hold on, I gotta roll my windows back up. I can't hear y'all. Yeah, I wish I could get some more volume. You have all these people all over the country worrying about you now. Yeah. <laughs> Crack the window, Liz. So if you guys see this, <laughs> worry. <laughs> Drink plenty of fluids. Yeah, I don't have any. Oh yeah, I do. Okay. All right, go ahead, Tom. What's your question? Brian O'Neill's question. He wants to know what software do we use to track KPIs? Oh. Elena, I think that uh, you're up first here. Okay, actually, oh, go ahead. You got Yeah, we actually uh, track, log it manually. So we use the, um, we tried, we follow the system, the EOS, which is uh, the traction book, right? So we have weekly meetings and then all the KPIs get logged from different software. And so one of them is reputation score. So we just go look at the reputation. Like one is the revenue or the profit. So we actually look it up in the accounting software and then we, we plug it in. So the, there is no software. The traction system does have its own software, which we tried, but it doesn't, I didn't like it. So we just use Google spreadsheet. That's all. Keep it simple. You ready, Liz? Yep. So we do the same as Elena. We um, bring everything in from other sources and we put it all into Google Sheets. We have five main metrics that we track, um, but depending on the need that we're going through at the time uh, for whatever that might be, then we might be tracking three or four more other things that will tend to change out every month, every couple of months. 
Um, the five things that we track regularly are revenue, the payroll percent of revenue, how many customers we have, how many employees we have, and profit. Those five things. Look at me. Yeah, wow. Well, 21 it, seconds left. Do you do you want those like on account or gift certificate or something? What is that? Wheel of Fortune where you can use these for another, you know, we don't play that, do we? I do remember I was on Wheel of Fortune, Tom. <sighs> you were, weren't you? Did you forget? And that was when your name was Buffy. That's right. Buffy. Back in the day. That's a story maybe you can share here uh sometime, but not at the moment because we got a question to answer. Um, we use our own software. We use Made Central that we, you know, license and, and, and share with a number of other cleaning companies as well. Um, we got into the business uh, I don't know twenty some odd years ago. There really wasn't a lot out there in terms of off the shelf production management software. So we started off with a simple database, access database, and it evolved over the years and. Like I said, for the last several years, we've been licensing our software to other companies uh, under the brand Made Central. It captures everything from, from leads to sales to all of our uh, production metrics, uh, revenue, uh, you know, payroll to revenue to, uh, you know, revenue per hour to customer attrition, employee att attrition, attendance. It uh, is very rich in, in, in KPI tracking because I guess I'm a engineer by nature and we like our numbers. Hey, Elena, you're a really good influence. I don't remember us getting our answers done on this consistently well ever. Right, Tom? Well, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good today. That, that is true. That we're is on true. a roll. Yeah. And, and, and right, you're you ready welcome. for my question? Uh, I am, yes. Okay, so my question is, hold on, he's got a bunch together here. Who, who is this? Is it your question? So, this is somebody from the MMA group, Tom, so from the success group. Got you, okay. All right, so he, he wants to know if you could only give one piece of advice for very, very small companies and then for, for advanced companies, what would those two pieces of advice be? If you only give one piece of advice for a small company and a large company, is that what he? Yeah, you, small company and then a large company. I guess he doesn't care about the middle sized company. And by small, I got the impression he meant new. Okay. So it's probably my start, right? Because it ended that one ended on you. It uh, did. You ready? All right. No, I got to open up the door so I can can breathe. All right. Liz, is this safe? I mean, you know, I got the door. You're, open. You're, 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 this isn't worth putting your life at risk. <laughs> yeah. Can you see how sweaty I am? Can you see the dripping? No, actually, the your your bandwidth is too low to see much of anything. Good. Well, that's good. Feel feel grateful for that, there, Tom. All okay. right. We ready? I know this is hard with with you know the excessive heat and everything. It's probably hard to concentrate. <laughs> Just put the timer up there. No. All right. So for small companies, I would say systems. Focus on your systems. Um, begin right from the very beginning, putting systems into place, and um, that's that's going to be key. Uh, if you can do that, you're going to be able to grow really, really well. But without those systems, you're going to get stuck pretty fast. And it's easy to um, think that this business is really easy when you're small because cash flow is so good that it seems like, wow, rolling in the dough. But if you want to grow past just you cleaning, then it's, it might be a little bit of a struggle. All right. The second thing for the big business is watch for complacency. The number one thing that I have seen kill big businesses is when the owner gets complacent, starts feeling like, yeah, everything's doing it itself. It's running itself. And then things start to slowly decline. Hey. 
Did you just shut your door again? Yeah, so I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to hear when I'm talking. <laughs> Very good. Bang. Okay, for small businesses, the first thing that I would encourage them to do is try to get as much revenue on the board as possible, but do it in a way where you're able to maintain it, where you're not, you know, try to get recurring revenue and build revenue as quick as you can. Because when you're really, really small and you've only got a few customers and a few people cleaning homes, it's hard to get a lot of any systems in place in terms of, you know, staffing and getting some sense of rhythm because if one person doesn't come to work, that's like half your workforce. So as quickly as you can get up to the point where, you know, you've got six, eight, you know, people working for you at that point, you have an opportunity to do more things. As far as large companies, um, you need to understand that the bigger you get, the more customers you have to lose and the harder it is to continue to grow and to scale that you constantly have to be, you know, reinventing how you attract clients and how you maintain clients in order to continue to grow when you start getting larger. Elena, you ready? Yes. I'm going to reinforce Liz's advice, which is if you're a smaller company or even medium sized company, systems are absolutely critical. You will just explode and die if you don't have systems or you will not grow. It becomes your bottleneck. So definitely put all the systems in place for every segment of your business marketing, sales, administration, production, systems, systems, systems. And then for a larger company, have a goal in mind. What is it that you're working for? Is it like that should be a number like the exit strategy or something don't work into nowhere. Uh, so work for your freedom, work for financial freedom, work for X number of dollars, whatever that you want. Don't don't just keep marching into nowhere. So have a goal. Very good. I got to say, I like both of your guys' advice. I, 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 I'm thinking that we need to try and find somebody to get on this show at some point in time that has a radically different opinion than we have <laughs> because yeah. that never happens. We're all like, yeah, yeah, that's good. Right, uh, try drugs. <laughs> try drugs. I've heard good things about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <gasps> okay. Do you have another question? Sarah has a question for us. What overhead positions do we have in organizations? Um, I guess I'm going next. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Bang. Okay. We have uh, several different branches. So at each branch, we have a, a supervisor who's, who's in charge of that branch. We have other activities that are, uh, are performed in a more centralized way. We have a person that's responsible for recruiting and a lot of the HR activities. We have another person that's re responsible for all the financial, the uh, bookkeeping, accounting, payroll, taxes, stuff like that. Um, we um, have open positions right now in terms of sales positions. We had to make some uh, readjustments, I guess, during COVID, but uh, typically we would have uh, a couple of people doing sales. Um, that's uh, basically our business model. Elena? Let's pull up our accountability chart. But basically we have um, customer service manager, uh, administrative assistant, HR manager, field manager. Then there's myself and my partner, which are, I don't know what our position is, uh, CEO, COO, or general manager. Uh, and we have trainers. That's all. Okay. I guess Liz didn't want to answer this question. I think she disappeared. Liz, can you hear us? Uh, hopefully she didn't pass out. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so we should have asked for like an address or something where she was. So if something happens, we can call 911. Hmm. Yeah. Liz is gone. Well, hmm. she's okay. Do you message her? Yeah. Let's see. This, uh... Hey, Liz, you okay?
CPR stat. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Let's see. Her phone might be dead. Anybody have another uh, another question for us while we're uh, waiting to hear the verdict on Liz? I have a Sterling saying my phone was in my pocket. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. That uh, that happens to me too often, and I find find myself uh, calling people that I didn't intend to, and then apologizing for it. Yeah. Same. Sarah, hit us up with another question. Yeah, well, I'm messaging this. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably her battery or something like that. Yeah. Battery. Um, hmm. So you know your your home office is in Las Vegas. You, you you do you consider Las Vegas your home? Yes. Okay. I understand that the casinos are starting to open up again. Yeah, they are. They are open, and we're kind of worried about it. So we'll see. Yeah, you. I could tell by the tone of your voice that that you don't uh, you you aren't sure that's a good idea. I'm sure it's not a good idea, but I mean, what are you going to do? It's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. It's like, uh, I, my, my second home is basically Hawaii because I used to live there for so long and they are pretty strict. They shut everything down. They're not reopening, but it's killing their economy. So it's like, it's tough. Um, I see that we have questions. Um, like three more questions. One here from Leslie. Yeah. Am I up or are you up? I forget. Uh, let's go with you. Okay. You. Bang, let's do this. Favorite form of marketing. Um, you know, I've been in cleaning, I've been in this industry for, for a long, long time. Back when we started, our favorite form of marketing was buying a really big yellow page ad and setting back and taking orders. Um, today for us, it's, it's almost all, you know, digital, online, you know, getting a, a website that, uh, you know, you can do natural search, do AdWords, um, you know, using social media to get more, more, more people to your website. But basically, you're trying to get people to your website and then try to get them to engage in a way where, you know, at the very least, you get contact information, if not actually uh, purchase something right through your website. So um, all of our attention basically goes into to digital. We haven't done anything in the, uh, the print world or like a lot of stuff that you saw um, Paul do, you know, the guerrilla marketing, we haven't done anything like that in, in several years. It's all digital. I just saw a sign from Liz that she's alive. So that's good. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, our favorite uh, form of marketing is, uh, well, our most effective form of marketing is digital as well. So we started with digital and we're going with digital. The second uh, most common is um, actually networking, in-person networking, uh, community building, stuff like that. So that worked really well for us. Um, and then my current favorite form of marketing is uh, based on the book, You Ask, You Answer. <laughs> yeah, educating the customers. Um, article content and putting it out there that fascinates me and we kind of live by that to begin with, but not to the extreme that's in the book so currently i'm working on that mark is shared his book is awesome yeah yeah we we should have mentioned him during our, our favorite books we love marcus yeah hey liz are hey y'all we but we didn't know where you were. Okay, y'all, that is how hot it is that my phone was like, I'm out. <laughs> That's that, right? It's like, how did you get I had it to blast it with air. I had to blast it with air conditioning. Wow. Cooled it off. Yeah. Good. We're sitting in the sun. It's hot. <laughs> All right. So am I up? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, yes, yes, you are. We had a question prior to this question that you, I guess you didn't want to answer. Um, <laughs> was, was, asking we'll about, answer was asking about your support staff, your organization, you know, your, oh. do you want to, do you want to answer sure. that one? Where did it go? Sure. I'll answer that one. And then we'll go back to the other question. So you get to answer two in a row. I feel so lucky right now. <laughs> do, do you have the stamina to do this? I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. So support staff. Um, and I think the question was not so much support staff, but non-rev generating maybe was kind of what I was thinking. Um, so I have two people that work full time and that's all that they do is non-revenue generating tasks. I have six other people that are revenue generating employees, but that do some non-revenue generating tasks. Um, so I don't know if, if that answers your question entirely, Sarah, but most of my people do revenue generating activities for the majority of their work day. And then they have a very small amount of work that they do that's non-rev gen. Good. That was nice. really good under the circumstances. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay, now marketing, my favorite form of marketing. Okay, I got it. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so I suck at marketing. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you what my favorite form of marketing is to do. What I'm going to tell you is my favorite form of marketing that I like when other people are doing this video. I think that video marketing is awesome. Well, um, it works on me. When I see video for companies, I get sucked in, especially if there's video and text to go along with it so that I can do both. That really can just suck me in. Um, it can be Facebook. It can be uh, by email. It can be on people's websites. I don't, I don't even care how they're delivering it, just um, by, by video. That's go. it. And I can hear you guys now. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Awesome. Okay. My earbuds are working. This is our next question. <laughs> Who was next? Are there no sheep trees in Washington? <laughs> You're such a smart aleck, Ernie. No, no, there aren't. I'm on I'm in eastern Washington. It's all desert over here. Sarah is really on you hard. About 84 <laughs> degrees. And this is, I mean. But how hot is it? Sarah, my phone literally turned off. Come on. That's hot in the car, right? Black interior, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. All right. I have another question over here. Okay. This is. This is not from it, the same guy. This is from a, a different woman. And she wants to know, what is your biggest regret or the biggest mistake that you've made in your business? Ooh, and, and Ernie gave us a question here that I've got up on the screen, which is kind of in the oh, same Oh, I didn't see that. Area. All right. Well, let's do Ernie's first, and then we can do my gals. Okay. Who's up? Um, although it feels like last year feels like 20 years ago, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, I, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You know, I'll go. I, I'll go. I was last last time, so I think it's Elena, actually. Oh, was it? Okay. Elena, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, again, as I said, last last year feels like forever and eternity. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, what I would do is probably... Um, in hindsight, I don't know. Our company is doing well. Um, I would probably have some kind of contingency plans for the pandemic uh, because my husband could see that pandemic is coming and I couldn't see it, right? I kind of waved it off. So I would think it through so it wouldn't be so emotionally shocking for me when it did come. So that's what I would do differently last year. As soon as it appeared in China, I would be like, all right, let's, let's see what shall we be doing. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You ready, Liz? 
gosh, um, kind of. Right. Uh, so I feel like this is really hard because I have a lot of things that I'm like, God, I could have done that better. Uh, I could have done it sooner. Or could have done more of that. So the one thing is kind of tricky. Um, I think what I'm going to say is that I would have engaged my team in tracking their profit, their individual profitability um, sooner. Last, I would have done that last year. I didn't do it until this year um, where they were tracking their individual. What was happening before was we were tracking it and then we were reporting on it instead of having them track it and then reporting it to us. And that has just sort of been a game changer, uh, really, really made a huge difference for us. So I think I think that's what I would have done. My big thing. One thing I wish I'd done differently last year, it's too early to say, actually. It'll probably take me another year or two to get enough data to give you a, a really good answer on that. Um, yeah, Like I said, I'm an engineer by training, so I have this affliction where you know, I really like analyzing and getting data. And we do a lot of things, and sometimes we don't get the outcomes that we're looking for, but... I, I look at that as, 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 as a data point. We're learning something and we build upon that and we, we do better. So, you know, this is not a, you know, I don't really have anything that I can point to and say, gee, I really wish we'd have done something differently, you know, because everything that we do, we're, we're learning from it and we're, we're modifying and, and, and it's kind of, you know, we build on that for the next thing. Spin master. Right there. We're going to call Tom's new nickname, Spin Master. It's, it's, it's the real. It's <laughs> real, Liz. Keeping it real. <laughs> Keeping it real. Yeah, you're trying to pretend that you are uh, uh, Carrie. Carrie yeah. Knight. <laughs> so, Tom, we are kind of out of time here. I don't think we have enough time to do... I guess yeah. if we're really, sh maybe if we go really fast, we can answer my gal's question. If we all try to keep it to 45 seconds. Sure. What's the question? Her question was, what is the your biggest mistake in your business so far? Okay. I have the answer to that. I can go pretty fast. Awesome. Yeah, go for it, Elena. Well, if Tom gives you the 45, okay, there we go. So the biggest mistake that I've done in my business so far is I didn't start holding people accountable right away. So I went all the way into support mode and I never asked for results. I never demanded the results. For me. So that, that took all of our profits at some point. So until we put a stop to it and we reverse it. Here. So that's the biggest. Very good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, my, my biggest mistake ties into an answer from earlier is I did not start documenting systems uh, uh, when I should have. I didn't start documenting them until way late and it really slowed me down, slowed down progress. It, it, it actually just stopped things in a lot of ways. That's it. Thinking about biggest mistakes, um, a lot of, you know, it, for me, making decisions about personnel and putting people in key positions and making sure that you're, have the right person in the right job and not waiting a long period of time to, to, to make changes if changes need to be made. You know, if people are, you know, if all the indications are there, it's not working, you know, don't put your head in the sand, step up and, and, and deal with it. Those are all good. Every single one of those are good, right? <laughs> they're all they're all big. They're all bad. <laughs> Why you're in the car? So. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right, Tom, you got to share our links. Hey, Elena, do you want to share um, like how people might uh, connect up with you as far as conquer or something like that if they want a little bit of more coaching or do you have any info like that? Yeah, is there any website? Uh, they have a website, but I forget. I think it's like AGS Conquer, but if you just ping me on my personal, people send me a message to my personal normally. So just like send me a message you. with the website. 
All right. So for those of you that don't know how to spell Elena's name, um, I think it's written here, but it's also E-L-E-N-A. And then Ledoux is L-E, D is in dog, O-U-X. Actually, I, I think, right, Elena? Yeah. I love that I'm spelling it when you're right here. Yeah, and the website is adlsinker.com, basically. So, but... Um, okay. Yeah, just hit me up on my personal. If you have, even if you need help, I'll call you. You, you want me to go ahead and put your cell phone number in the chat? It's so mean, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cleaning business today if you haven't subscribed it couldn't be any easier just your email first name last name it is absolutely free we've been doing this for uh, gee i don't know seven years or so maybe um oh, wow there's a ton of information here and we got our super secret coronavirus download link all of the um, goodies that we've shared here on Smart Business Moves. Most recently, uh, Paul August's uh, FAQ script, which we saw earlier this week. Paul was awesome. There you go. Um, just so you know, uh, class number seven is really close to uh, being uh, launched for uh, PHC. It'll be uh, coming out. Uh, it'll be it'll be out by Monday. I'll say that way. It's coming out sometime this weekend. We'll be uh, sending out emails and posting it uh, in, in Facebook when that's there. The final exam will be there. Everything will be done, and it will be in the can. So yay! Uh, so we'll have more to uh, say about that next week. Anything else, Liz? Nothing except you guys have a great weekend. Remember to take a little downtime. We're still in it. We're not back to normal yet. So we are still like burning our candles at both ends and take some time because this is an unprecedented time. You're welcome, Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Elena, you are you are you're you're awesome in so many ways. You're one of my favorite <laughs> industry. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you are really are. You you guys have a have a safe week and please get some rest. This is a uh, this is a long run here. We will see you Monday five o'clock Eastern. Bye bye. Bye bye.